Good morning. Glad that you're all able to join us in worship today. Would you take a moment to say hi to the people who are around you? All right, so today in our worship service, we're going to continue some thoughts of uh, the flags that they fly during NASCAR races. And we've noticed that some of those flags carry messages that can be incorporated into, into our Christian culture and some of the thought process that we use as Christians in our walk of faith. So. The flag that we're going to be looking at today is the green flag. So the green flag means get going. Okay, get going. So, so, G, uh, so the Lord speaks to Amos in our Old Testament lesson, one of the, re the readings today, and he says, Amos, get up and go. Go carry my message. In this case, that was a message of warning. But Amos... Get up and go and carry my message. Green flag is waving of us as Christians. And that green flag is saying, hey, we need to do that too. All right, so that's going to be our thought and theme for today. We're going to start out with our, with our hymn, Lord, speak to us that we might speak, that we might go. Let's sing along in these verses. Today we see the green flag flying in front of us, saying for us to go, to maybe go and speak for the Lord, which may be a message of warning, may be a message of comfort. In each case, all of those thoughts come through in God's word that we may be asked to speak for him. So let's, let's think about that as that becomes our encouragement from God's word in our worship today. Today, as always, we worship in the name of the triune God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Let's stop for a moment to confess our sins with some of those things that are going to come up in the worship for today. Heavenly Father, we know that the green flag flies. We know that you ask us to go. We know that you asked us to speak. 
And yet we are hesitant to go or to speak. Isaiah had a message that was going to be a message of warning. And that warning was to put God first. But Lord, instead of speaking that to others, I need to hear that message for myself. To put God first. At times, Lord, I don't like hearing about my own sins. It's not easy. But Lord, let me hear the word of truth and that truth in your law. But let me also hear the gospel. And then, Lord, let me have the strength to share it. Lord, I am a sinner. And in your mercy, I ask that you would, have, uh, that, that you would look on me with your forgiveness. As we have begged our Almighty Lord for his forgiveness, we thank the Lord for planting in us the seed of his word. So by your Holy Spirit, Lord, help us to receive that word with joy and to bring forth, forth fruits in faith and hope and love. And we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, now and forever. Amen. Let me just back up to, uh, to express the words of forgiveness once again. As, as we come before our Lord, wanting to hear his forgiveness, begging to, to know his mercy, it is an amazing thing to know that his mercy is always granted to us. And he promises us through Jesus Christ the everlasting promises of forgiveness now and in eternity. So now in the peace of that forgiveness, let us praise the Lord with this verse from the song, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. pray. God of all power and might, you are the giver of all that is good. Help us love you with all of our heart. Strengthen us in true faith. Provide us with all that we need and keep us safe in your care and give us this message to share with those around us. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So our three readings are going to give us this encouragement to go. So you're listening, you're applying, you're wondering, how does the Lord want me to go? What does the Lord expect of us in this message of going? In other words, what does going look like for you? First lesson from Ephesians says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in this heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Is that law or gospel? Think to yourself. So he chose us before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. This is the law. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his son through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given to us in the one he loves. Here's the gospel, right? In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. There's gospel that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery. He's making known to us the mystery. What is the purpose? How will I apply that 
in my own life made known to us the mystery according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head even Christ in him we were also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of him who works everything out in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ, might be the praise of his glory. In other words, those of us who know the glory of Christ are to share it, to go with it. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. So we have a message that is to the praise of God's glory. Join with me now in our verse of the day from Luke chapter 8. Together? Happy are they who hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bring forth fruit with patience. All right, we're picturing that green flag in front of us. We're applying it to ourselves. How does the Lord want me to respond to a green flag? And now we have the disciples as they are called by the Lord from Mark chapter 6. Calling the twelve to him, he sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake off the dust of your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. Green flag, waving, waving a warning in this case. Warning. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Here ends our gospel lesson. Let's continue with the words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's sing the song, Jesus and Shall It Ever Be. As 
we see that green flag waving in front of us, as we hear the message of go, as we hear all the engines that are roaring around us, might I ever put on my brakes because I'm ashamed? Well, that's the thought that the hymn writer is asking us to consider, that sometimes we may not hit the gas. Sometimes we may choose not to go because we're concerned about being ashamed of Jesus in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. Lord, give us courage to speak. One Bible passage that sometimes pastors will use in uh, speaking a sermon is, Lord, open my lips that, they, that my mouth may declare your praise. Maybe that's a thought for us this morning. Lord, open my lips that my mouth and our hearts and our mouths may speak your praise. Amen. So I'd like to speak to the children for, uh, for a moment and, uh, and, and think about, and think for a moment about riding, or riding your bikes. As you ride your bikes out, uh, out maybe on the sidewalks and you're riding along, there are going to be times in which you stop because there's, there's certain cautions. You know, there's a caution when you get to the edge of a road because you don't want to just keep riding your bike across the road because you might want to be warned that there might be cars. Sometimes along the road they have signs that are warnings too that you have to stop because certain things are crossing your road. If you go out in the country, you might see a sign that says, that has a picture of a deer jumping across the road. Some parts of the country, they don't see a lot of deer crossing signs. We see them in Minnesota. I'm wondering if you're ever out driving your bicycles, if you've ever seen this sign. An elephant crossing? Have you ever seen an elephant crossing? You know, it reminds me of a joke. The one, uh, the one joke says that, uh, have, have you realized that elephants are really good at hiding in trees? And the answer is no, I've never seen that. And the reason is because they're really good at it. You may not see elephant crossings when you're riding your bicycles. But a warning like this is sometimes good in other places of the world. They do have places in the world where you might want to, when a yellow sign like this is in front of you, you might want to pick your head up. You might want to be alert because there might be something around you that you need to be aware of. This is called a warning sign. And it's yellow because it wants to warn you about something, something that's around you. You should be up and aware and, and have your eyes up and your head up and looking. Amos is in our Bible story today. And Amos is going to be told that he should warn people. In other words, there's a warning sign. And that sign might say, warning, put God first. You're not doing that. You're not thinking about the Lord in your life. You're not putting him first. Be careful. Have your head up. See, that's what Amos was doing. He was, trying to, he was trying to warn people about the situation that was in front of them. And so that's what we're going to be talking about with the adults today. And those warnings are probably good conversations with you and your parents. What are some of the things that your moms and dads like to warn you about? Because... It isn't because they don't like you. It's because they, just the opposite, they love you. And they want you to be safe. So they're going to warn you sometimes about, about certain things that you're doing that might not be safe. Amos was talking to the nation of Israel about things that they were doing that were not safe. Let's close with a prayer. Dear Lord, I want to think today about, about warnings that you told Amos about 
And I wonder if any of those warnings that you told Amos about might be warnings that I might to need to listen to. And maybe, Lord, you might ask me to present some of those warnings to people around me. Lord, help me to think about what you want from us. And I do that because of what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to be turning now to the, to the prophecy of Amos in the book of Amos. He's one of the minor prophets of the Old Testament. Not necessarily one of the easier books of the Bible to find because, because he's in that smaller section of the Old Testament. But Amos chapter 7, verses 10 through 15. So right before this, he's telling Amos that Israel doesn't measure up. He uses an example of a plumb line. And a plumb line is for you to look at to make sure that, that you are measuring square. And he says Israel is not measuring square. It's not straight. And for that reason, Israel needs to be warned. And Amos needs to share the warning that God is given, giving to his people. So, um, so that's going to be that plumb line conversation. Let's read, these, let's read these words first of all. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel. Now Bethel was not Jerusalem. So that means that Bethel was a place of idol worship in Israel. And the priests that were there would have been priests of idol worship. They might have thought that they were still worshiping the true God, but they were using idols to be able to do it. Sometimes even calves of idols, similar to what you already know of as something Israel went through years ago as they worshiped the golden calf. Okay, so... Amaziah was a priest of idol worship in Bethel. And he sent a message to Jeroboam, the king of Israel, who liked idol worship in the temple. And he said, Amos is raising a conspiracy against you. In the very heart of Israel, the land cannot bear all of his words. In other words, he's talking against us. He's talking against your idols. He's talking against our worship. This is the way that we do it. And this is what he's saying. Jeroboam will die by the sword and Israel will surely go into exile away from their native land. And Amaziah said to Amos, get out, you seer. Go back to the land of, uh, go back to the, uh, to the land of Judah. Eat your bread there. Do your prophesying there. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't prophesy anymore at Bethel because this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of this kingdom. This is what we do here. Amos answered Amaziah, who just told him to go. He said, I was neither a prophet nor a prophet's son. I was a shepherd, and I also took care of the sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, go, green flag, go and prophesy, which would be a warning, this prophecy of warning, to my people Israel. So just prior to our words, the Lord is talking about how Israel is falling short, how Israel is not measuring straight according to the plumb line. So he says, look, I'm setting a plumb, plumb line among my people Israel. And notice that they're not straight and I need, I need a warning to go to them. God had an important message. And he chose a guy who wasn't a public speaker. And he wasn't seminary trained. He was a guy who was not used to dealing with public at all. He wasn't even comfortable with people, you might think. 
because he tends sheep and he watches over trees. Amos was kind of known to be kind of gruff. Wasn't necessarily a people person. But God wasn't calling him to be a people person. Take my message of warning, Amos. You don't have to be a people person. Just give them the message that I give to you and warn them that their lives are pointed in a different direction away from my will. So Amos called them hypocrites. He told them that they were idol worshipers. He told them that they were indifferent to the gospel. He gave them a message that they didn't want to hear. So let's think about a few points today as, uh, as we look at this lesson. Here are some points to ponder. First of all, you're going to hear some similarities between Amos' day and today. Because the nation of Israel wasn't down and out. The nation of Israel was alive and succeeding. They were pretty prosperous during the time of Amos. They were winning in some of their battles. Their, their borders were being enhanced. But they were declining spiritually growing in their land size, growing in their pocketbooks, but declining in their spirituality. M maybe. Does that apply to some people in the society in which we live? How about this one? Do people today reject a message that may hurt? A message that they might not like? Would that sound like anything that maybe is happening in today's world? If I don't like your message... I may turn away. Or the next one, do people today think you don't have the right to talk to me? You're not my mama. You're not my boss. Who are you to be the one to talk to me in such a way? That's what they were thinking about Amos. Who are you, Amos? You're not my priest. You're not my high priest. Who are you? Do I have to listen to your message? What gives you the right to talk to me? What gives us the right to talk to other people? Maybe apply to today? Would people cancel you? Now you have to understand what the term cancel is in the society in which we live, but would people cancel you today if you didn't say the right thing? Isn't that kind of the definition of canceling today. If I don't say the right thing in the right way, then I might have the right to cancel you. Sounds like today, and canceling is exactly what they wanted to do to Amos. It's kind of a 2021 word that, uh, that people are using more and more in the world in which we live in. If you're not saying the right thing, cancel you. Okay. Amos was in that same market. So that's points to ponder as we think about our Bible story today. In Amos chapter 2, so we're going to go back a couple of chapters, Amos is looking at these people, and he's saying, they sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. He says, they trample on the heads of the poor and upon the dust of the ground and deny justice to the oppressed. He's looking at them. He's pointing his finger at them and saying, look what you do to people. Is this the way that believers are supposed to react? Is this the way that you're supposed to, you're supposed to say? And, and Amaziah says, look, you just, you're not from around here. This is the way that we do things around here. This is the way that our king tells us to do things. This is the way that we are supposed to react up here. You don't like it, you go back to where you're from. You ain't around, you ain't from around here. So Amaziah is the high priest of, of this idol-worshiping Bethel. And yes, the, the, the world in which they're living in is prospering. And, 
And that's what's throwing Amaziah off. Amaziah says, well, of course the Lord is blessing us. Look at how he's blessing our country. Look at how he's blessing our people. Look how he's blessing our military. As long as things are going well, God must think that we're doing just fine. Amos wants to address that thought. But he tells them the words that they don't want to hear. He tells them about God's judgment. And Amaziah says, oh my goodness, we can't have that. You're a troublemaker. Amos, go. I, I like how we're waving a green flag today telling us to go. And Amos has a green flag on both sides of him. The Lord told him, Amos, get up and go. And now Amaziah is saying, yes, Amos, go. Get away from us. Huh? But Amos doesn't really listen to Amaziah. It's not Amaziah that he needs to please. In fact, he says, I am doing what the Lord told me to do. So when we listen to God's word, one of the things that we'll need to do is apply it. How does God's word apply to us? And I asked this question earlier because I was asking you, how does it look for you to hear and see the green flag fluttering in front of you? And what does it look like to go? How are you going to apply these words in your life? And, and how one person applies it might be different from the other person, and the way that they apply it might be different from the rest of us. So in other words, we kind of need each other to make this personal. All of us need to be aware of what the Lord has done for us so that we can go. But what it looks like to some might be different for others. Some of you may have a family member who needs to hear the warnings as well as then the gospel and, and love of the Lord. And others of you are seeing things completely different and how you might apply this, uh, apply this message. Are people trying to cancel our words? Is that, is that something that's, that's happening around us? Are people looking at us saying, you don't have the right to speak to me this way? But it wasn't Amos's words. This is an important point. Amaziah wanted to cancel Amos. But it wasn't Amos' words. So if somebody wants to cancel you for sharing the gospel, are they really canceling you? Isn't it instead that they're trying to cancel the Lord? And so therefore, I have a message that the Lord wants me to bear and people might uh, apply that word by, oh, they might reject it, they might make excuses for it, they might listen. Or they might try to cancel that message that we share as we apply that word into our, into our lives. The way that I started the sermon was quoting this passage on the left. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth may declare your praise. Amos was asked by the Lord to open his lips now, the message was kind of a harsh one. It was a message of law. But even the law, when it is pre presented as truth to the people around us, is declaring God's praise. And ultimately, I want to get to sharing of the gospel so that, so that I can tell a person about God's love, about his forgiveness, about the way that he sent his son into the world to take my place. I need to hear that message. I need to know that I have a Savior who loved me at, at the cost of his own son. And I need to know that that's a message for me, even though I have failed the Lord in so many ways, the Lord has looked to me with love. And so, Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. And then this other passage is a wonderful passage that the Apostle Paul was using. The Apostle Paul says, says to Timothy, I want you to preach the word. 
whether it's in season or not. In other words, whether we preach doesn't depend on whether or not people listen. Uh, same thing with Amos, right? Same thing with us. The sharing of God's truth is not dependent on whether or not some people are going to listen. It just needs to be shared so that they have opportunity to respond themselves. So the devil wants to cancel God. Let that sink in for a moment. The devil wants to cancel God. I don't know who said the phrase, but, uh, but the person said, you know, the problem with Christianity is Christians. What do you think that person meant? He said, I like the message of Christianity, I just don't like Christians. And here's how the devil chooses to cancel God. Because he points to the Christians and says, look how they behave. Look, look what Christians do. Look at those who are calling themselves the messengers. The message must be wrong. Because the messengers are so sinful. All right, so could my impurities cause God's word to become impure? Think about that. Could my impurities cause God's word to become impure? And the answer is no. God's word is pure. God's word is just. God's word is holy. And just because we as Christians have failed doesn't make God's word impure. See how the devil, though, works? The devil points at the Christians and shows all the sin that we as Christians are doing and wants to cancel the message because of the messengers. I pray that that doesn't happen in our lives, that people look at our lives and use it as examples to not be Christians. And at the same time, I know that I'm a sinner. The devil is going to use every opportunity to take away our message. The devil is going to use every opportunity to cancel God by pointing to his messengers And those messengers that the Lord gives, those messengers that, that we are, the messengers are asked to listen to the, and see the green wave waving in front of them and going out to share the message we know in our hearts. And as we go out to share this message, I preach Christ. I don't preach myself. You see, it's not about me. It's always going to be about Christ. And if I try to make it about me, then I could probably be considered a sellout. Now let me explain. What does it mean to be a sellout? It's someone who compromises integrity for themselves. The Apostle Paul was speaking out against someone who might have thought that he was a sellout by whatever means. I would say Amaziah was, in a sense, compromising his integrity for his own benefit, saying, this is what we do here. This is, this is the way that our king wants it. Maybe he's benefiting in, in some sort of way. Scripture is telling us to preach Christ crucified. And when that message has success, listen, listen, we have this treasure in jars of clay. It's not about us. That this all-surpassing power, when it shows success, is from God and not from us. It's, it's all about God. And, and the proof that it happens is when this message from us impure jars of clay starts to succeed and take root in the world around us. So we preach Christ. So now... We go and warn. I don't know if you are aware that uh, at, at one of the times in which a lion roars is right before the hunt. 
So the lion roars, and that is to signal that the hunt will begin. Some of the jungle will hear the roar, and they'll run away, sometimes right into the back end of the attack. When the one lion roars, the younger ones are oftentimes on the back end, and those who are running away from the roar are running right into the attack. But the lion roar is the warning that the attack is ready to begin, the warning of, uh, of what's taking place. I, I think that Amos was roaring. Amos was roaring, and it was meant to be a warning to the world around. And I think the Lord is calling us at times to roar. To roar that the warning is there. Now, you're going to say, I can see myself on both sides of this flag. I can see myself as needing to hear Amos's words because Amos's words were looking at my heart and, and saying, be careful, put God first. Know his love for you. Know what he wants for you. Know what he's done for you. Look at how we have sometimes failed. Yes, I can see myself listening to Amos. I can also see myself waving the flag. Because I have heard that message of Amos and that warning of the Lord and that roar of the lion and I hear God's truth of the gospel and the place that he ha and the way that he has taken my place on the cross and my place in death and has given me the wonder of eternity. Wow, the green flag is pretty awesome. The green flag is pretty intimidating. Because it gives me, it gives me a, an opportunity to look at myself and, and to hear the warning that the green flag can sometimes give, but it also gives me opportunity to, to know that this is what God wants of me. Share the gospel. Share the warning. Share Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all of our understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. As we, think about, uh, as we think about what the Lord has done for us, it inspires us. It inspires us to want to respond. One of the ways in which we respond is with our offerings. So we think about the joy that the Lord has, has given to us and the way that we want to share that message just like Amos did. And that becomes our inspiration for wanting to respond in the ways in which we do as Christians. So let's now join in singing this song that kind of reiterates the, the thought of the green flag and going. Let's sing these two verses from the song, Awake, O Spirit, Who Inspired. <laughs> pray.
Heavenly Father, we pray just like the hymnist prayed, let your word have speedy course. Through every land be glorified. As Amos was carrying his message, the prayer was to let his word, God's word, have speedy course because the world was not plumb, nor was our own hearts plumb. And we need the message of warning for ourselves, and so therefore we might think to ourselves, we can't carry this message to others. We first need it for ourselves. And there's truth in that. I first need the message for myself. But then I know the truth in my heart that the Lord asks me to share with the world around. I am a satisfied customer of the gospel, which makes me uh, able to share the message of the satisfaction I know that I can share it with others. Lord, help my message, which ultimately, Lord, I pray is your message to take root in people's hearts so that they might know the truth of their own sin and know the love that you give because of their own forgiveness. Lord, help us to roar a warning to those around who may not know and help us roar the message of your truth and love that people find comfort in the solace of a Savior. Lord, it is in your name that we pray these things and any other that weigh upon our hearts. We bring them to you, Lord, in the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Once again, receive the, the blessing of the Lord that he wants to give to you as his children. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let's conclude our worship service with singing these verses from the song, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. So we started our service with the song, Lord, speak to us that we may speak. And then the last line that we just said, ever faithful, ever faithful to your truth, may we be found. Those are the thoughts as we're seeing the green flag wave in front of us, that, that we would go, that we would speak 
our words for the Lord's words, and then be faithful to the truth. We pray that that's a message that gives you strength for the week to come, and strength that uh, inspires you in your Christian life as, uh, as you live it, uh, as you leave these doors. So uh, thank you to, uh, to those who served our worship service. Arthur is not here today, so, so thankful to the, those who are playing the piano. Seth and Paula were playing the piano through our worship service. Thank you to them, uh, Dan, for taking care of our camera, and, and Jody for helping us out with ushering, and those who helped us out with a coffee hour downstairs, and, and all the other people who are working behind the scenes in ways in which we might not see them, but yet are working uh, here and around the church just to make things happen on behalf of Pilgrim. Uh, thank you to all of those people uh, who are working, thankful for those who are praying for the ministry that we carry out here at Pilgrim. Inside, the, inside your bulletins, there's a communication card that we ask people to fill out. Um, when we have communion, that is also a place where we sign for communion on that card. If you're a regular member here at Pilgrim, we already have your address and things like that. You don't need to fill it out fully. Uh, that's mostly what we need from our visitors, that they would fill that out completely so that we would have their address and have the ability to contact them afterwards. But <clears throat> for the members, we do use that communication card for our... Uh, for our signing up for communion. Um, but also on that sheet, there's a place where you can volunteer some things and pass a message along to the church office. So if there's ever a message that you need to pass off to the office, that's a good place to be able to put it. And then bring those communication cards into the offering plates at each of the three doors uh, uh, as, you, as you leave the church. So, um, encouragement toward Bible study. I'd like to say that we're talking about moving the Thursday Bible class to being face-to-face. -face. And that would be like on a Thursday morning. I guess we haven't said it fully yet, but we're talking like uh, 10 o'clock on a Thursday morning. Live, we might also offer it on Zoom so those people could come live. Um, maybe having a snack that we might share, but we're thinking about Thursday morning for a live Bible study to take the place of the, the one that's being done on Zoom right now on Thursdays. The one on Wednesday is in the evening, and a lot of people has, have said, you know, it's difficult to make it live uh, to church on a, on a Tuesday night at 6 o'clock when there's traffic and everything, so maybe... We keep the Zoom, at least for now, on a Tuesday night. So that's been a, a few of the thoughts. I'll just express them out loud so that everybody is uh, aware of these things. In a couple weeks, we have Vacation Bible School starting on August 16th. Remember that, uh, that we're saving the date of a special service on August 15th. So if you know of someone who can help with Vacation Bible School... If you know of some children that might uh, be able to join us for Vacation Bible School, um, help us out. Become our army of helpers to try to make our Vacation Bible School a success. We, uh, we're continuing with the uh, conversation about our sign out afterwards. There are special envelopes that are available uh, at, at the uh, entrances and exits of the doorways. So, uh, we're thinking about our sign project here as well. Uh, the council has set that we are looking for about half to be, uh, to be our first goal to be able to put up the sign and then we'd see how we do afterwards. So that's the thought on that too. So I'm filled with all sorts of news today. Um, any other announcements that I haven't said today that you should uh, point me to? All right, God's blessings to everyone. Join us downstairs for our coffee hour. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Have a good day.